Good afternoon, Mountain Lions Nation. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Lionsverse, a weekly video series designed to take you inside the athletic department to get to know some of your coaches as well as your fellow student athletes. I'm your host, Holly Stevenson, and with us today we have the head coach for the men's golf team, Phil Trujillo. Coach, thank you so much for taking time uh, out of your day to sit down and talk with us. Um, thanks, yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate you having us. Um, congratulations also, by the way, on the fourth place finish at the LSC RMAC shootout this er, earlier this week. Um, can you tell us a little bit of how this year is um, different than the years that you've coached here at UCCS? Well, the way I'm different is dealing with COVID and how to carry any Um, so have you f felt like there has been a significant impact for your team in how you prepare for a meet or your practices or anything like that? Um, or because it's still outside, you guys ha don't re have, haven't really felt as much of an impact as the other sports have. Yeah, no, we have not had to deal with, uh, similar things that other indoor sports have are dealing with, we're very fortunate, golf outside, obviously. So, you know, the guys, um, we still keep our distance. We still wear our masks when we're supposed to wear our masks. Um, when we're playing, we do not. Um, but the guys understand that uh, there's no handshaking or high-fiving. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just about respecting the, uh, the bubble, uh, the social distancing aspect of it. And other than that, nothing has changed the plan or practicing playing wise um, for, for others. Right. Well, that's really good to hear, especially because um, I know it, with cha changes academically, um, it can be a big mental change and golf is already a, a mental ga game to begin with. Um, have you noticed um, any sort of changes with your athletes having to adjust to online schooling or anything like that? You know, we talk about it often with them and we try to prepare them early on of what so I, I, I gave them the opportunity from the very beginning on whether they want to play or not, uh, if they want to get out. Um, I gave the team the opportunity to say, hey, what would you guys do? What are you doing and not doing? And it was overwhelming. Uh, all eight of them were, let's go play coach. We're good. We'll, we'll mind ourselves. We'll do the right thing. But we want to play. It's the reason that we, uh, the reason we came to UCF to compete and to win championships. So they were all on board, um, and, and it, it was it was incredible. And uh, we went as soon as they let us go. We started uh, we started getting after it. That's really great to hear. I know um, it, it's it can be especially nice to have some normalcy um in the world that and the kind of the state of the world that it is today too for sure um so you we were talking a little earlier um about how you've been with the school for 19 20 years now um how and you've had i think with all, all the years you haven't um pulled below uh 20th place in the d2 division and division two for um ncaa so how do you Pull consistent work from your athletes over the course of uh, your your time here. Uh, you know, we've been very fortunate to recruit and bring in um, the athletes that fit our culture well. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, you know, that many years, twenty years, and an average of nine players on a team per year, you're going to get a couple that maybe kind of fall outside of that norm. But for the most part, we've been very lucky. And we create a culture here that school is, is the most important aspect of being a member of our program. Uh, and then we go after the very best players that we can that, that want to do this, that, that, that always need to do the same thing. Work hard, play 
play your best ball and give them the opportunity. Be a good teammate uh, and be someone in the community that uh, that can walk around uh, and, and represent our program uh, and our university uh, very well. Uh, mm -hmm. and you, you know, you miss every now and then, and that's okay. You learn from that. But for the most part, we've been fortunate. And the young men that we've brought in are all on the same page of wanting to compete at the highest level. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a big reason why we've been pretty consistent over the years with maintaining a high level in the Division II ranking uh, and winning as many championships that, that, that we have won. So, so it's, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's definitely something to be said about the methodology that you've implemented, Ben, um, especially with just c uh, consistent results from your team. Um, do you feel like there, what, like, what was your approach when you kind of took over the program versus what your approach is going into year 20? When I first took over, it was, uh, you know, I had, I had always wanted to be a college golf coach. So, and I, and I watched a very uh, incredible golf coach, Steve Miranda, at the airport for many years. So mm -hmm. I kind of had a little leg up to that side. So I just kind of watched him, sitting back and watching him. And uh, so I, I came in really prepared. I, I don't think I was prepared for the um, the type of athlete that I was going to take over mm -hmm. uh, in the environment that uh, that was left. However, I knew I had a plan, I had a vision, um, and, and, and I, I, I put it into full effect from day one, and it's still, it's still the same plan and vision. So uh, I just stay consistent with it. Now it's now it's harder and harder to recruit, and especially with COVID, I think this year's been very difficult. But the division one, they get a little leg up when I'm recruiting, and and over the years, uh, it's been very easy for me to get the top athletes out of Colorado and, and, and other states nearby us um, uh, that that weren't going to play the one. Seems like it's, that, that's all everyone wants to do. Um, um, which may, and they get a little signed, they, they start talking to little things. So it makes it a little difficult for the Division II level recruiting wise. So that's the biggest thing from, from the from year one is like, well, what, what, what do I have? And what do I have to work with? And now with the resources that we have, the, the, the support from the university um, and from great uh, uh, boosters, um, now the, the hardest part is just getting uh, continued recruitment that kick in the pocket. Right, right. Um, and do, with the athletes that you bring in um, and the veterans that you have on your team, um, they have a lot of expectations coming in. You know, you've, you've really built up the esteem for the program. Is there, do you have, have you seen issues, I guess, with keeping them level-headed and focused on one tournament at a time? Or are, do, are they, do they seem pretty level-headed kind of all throughout? Yeah, you know, golf, golfers in general, they're, they're pretty level-headed. Difficult to play your game uh, if, if if you can't control um, you can't control your personality your mindset mm -hmm. uh, you really have to stay kind of level so that that they're all they're all pretty that way the hardest thing is which far are going to travel and, right. uh, and who's going to who's going to step up when they have to the veterans get a leg up because we play such great golf course here in Colorado Springs uh, very fortunate to play the course we play at. And they're very demanding, so the veterans automatically have a leg up on the incoming uh, freshmen or transfers. Uh, and that's difficult. Uh, and still, this past week, uh, I, I physically need what's called a coach's kit, and my gut told me to, to take uh, Travis Foster being called transfer out of Washington. And, 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 and at the end, I did. I let the qualifying round speak for themselves. If we had Travis in the lineup, we were in second. And we have been six stops ahead of the fifth place team. So it's just uh, every now and then it's, 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 you fall into that and, um, and that's going to happen. So right. it's, it's a matter of competing and giving the opportunity. That's the hardest part of our athletes at this level. Right, right. Um, you had mentioned before that you had always wanted to be um, a collegiate co coach for golf. So what kind of sparked your interest in golf? And then how did you start to work your way into being a, uh, the college coach that you are today? 
Uh, you know, I attended a, um, a, a school that was very similar to what we have, the professional golf management program, the CPM program there. Yeah. Uh, I had already gotten a tour uh, a CEO of program that I attended. And I realized after we came on the lot that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Uh, the, the play that I was seeing from these young kids was unbelievable. Um, and, and, and it just it, it kind of put things in perspective for me of what avenue of golf do I want to take? Um, I, was a, I was a professional golf uh, member for, for many years. Um, and I just decided that uh, at one point that coaching is something I've always loved doing. And I just thought instead of coaching the other sports that I grew up playing, more of, maybe it's time to start focusing on golf. And so when I left the golf club and I knew that I wanted to be here at Eisenhower Golf Club, um, so it's a course I've worked at for 30 years, because they have a golf program, I met Gene Miranda right away. He was very kind to me. He allowed me to kind of watch and see how things work out. Mm -hmm. And my love for coaching just continued to grow. Um, so those are the steps that I took. Uh, and then I was given the opportunity. It's a funny story. I was turned down by a local high school um, to be their coach because uh, the AD thought I didn't have enough uh, experience. And I've been running the junior golf program with some of the high schoolers for many years at that point. And two weeks later, the athletic director um, asked me to get asked me to have lunch with him and another gentleman. And that's when they offered me the job to coach at the university at the university. So I wasn't good enough to coach high school. But uh, <laughs> well, sure. yeah, it seems like you were just kind of meant to co skip over high school and go right to college then. That's uh, that's a great story. I bet they're kicking themselves now. Um, so what do you look for in recruits now? Because um, you said your philosophy is kind of the same um, going through the seasons now. So is there a particular trait or anything that you look for when you're um, looking to recruit your athletes? Yeah, there's a big difference, and, and, and to go back to your original question there on, on year one till now, recruiting is always just off the you know, In those days, you might go away to try um, to find a young man and athlete that can play the game at a higher level. Mm -hmm. But I also enjoy being around, and because I thought if we could get a bunch of guys that that I enjoy being around, they would want to be, enjoy being around each other. Uh, and that's what creates that, that, that environment. In those days, back in the day, in the early days, school was important. It's always, it's always been a, the most important aspect. Uh, but it's even more important these days. And so, as opposed to me jumping out and trying to find out the athletes that have been great morning averages, uh, I start to look for um, the athletes with. Uh, a, a good GPA out of high school. Uh, okay. Our school is too demanding that if, if the GPA and the scores, if their grades aren't good in high school, they're going to struggle here, which means I'm never going to get any good golf out. Right. So, right. so now it's like just find, just find the athletes that the grades are as good as the golf. Um, and, and that's, that's the biggest challenge. Because in most golfers, it's funny, years ago, they always, they all had a high GPA. They all, well, they all got great ACT scores that they keep it. And so that wasn't that big an issue. And now I think, I, I believe that the junior golfer now is so focused on making it to the next level of college uh, and getting that college scholarship that their grades are suffering because there, there's more golf tournaments out there for them to play. So they're playing in more golf tournaments, which means their score, their, their grades. So it is. It's difficult to, to try to combine the two um, uh, of making sure that we're bringing in the athletes that are going to be successful at the university school level as well as the golf level. That's a very great point. Um, have you ever found an athlete that you um, really liked and then? found that th their GPA isn't up to par with what you want and had a discussion with them or their coach or their parents to say, hey, we would love to have you on our team in the future, but with the way things are going right now, uh, we, we won't be able to offer you a position. 
Yeah, that, that happens about often. Uh, I mean, not, not like, you know, not crazy amount of time, but there was, there was a young man last year in the at, and um, he ended up CCA marking his high, his test scores went as high, and when I wrote this transcript, um, you know, it, it had PE on there uh, a handful of times in both the fall semester and spring semester, and if you're not passing PE, you're probably going to really start at the university level taking so as, as much as we start to contribute to our team uh, score-wise, um, it, it wasn't meant for very long. So you have that conversation with the mom and dad uh, and, and the student athletes that you can really, really interested in. However, your grades just not where they need to be for us to really consider them. And, and most of the time they say, yeah, we, we can count on that and we need to work on that. Uh, but it typically takes and then makes a lot of sense. Um, and then you've had such a successful program. You've built it up um, to be a huge success, and you've also received four RMAC Coach of the Year awards. So how do you how do you yourself stay focused on the goals that you set for you and your team, um, and try not to get I don't know um, big headed or a big ego or anything like that. Yeah, that, that, we're good with that. That's uh, <laughs> in the first off of our mind. Cause if we won a national championship, it would be the greatest team uh, for our program. It would be incredible for the university. But it's not going to change who we are and what we're going to continue to try to do. We still understand that it's the steps, taking the correct steps along the way, will eventually get us to where we want to be in the end. Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, it, you know, you win athletes and your student athletes win things, and it's great, and, it, and it's better. Hey, we're working hard and doing the right thing. We have caught a lot of great things. Um, you know, I think 14 conference championships. We've been to the NCAA seven times. Uh, I've been fortunate to win region coach of the year, uh, I think, nine times, and, and our coach of the year many times. Um, and we got a ton of all American dollar athletes. And those flags are piling up, and, and that's, that's a, a great thing. Two awards that we want to mean the most to our program uh, are the academic awards, team academic awards that, that we beat out 20 other teams, or 19 other teams, because 20 teams are going to go We beat out 19 other teams to win that award, and we've done it twice now. Uh, right. That, that's, uh, that, that right there is probably more important to almost every mom and dad. Um, and to me and to our university. So there's uh, there's no chance in, in, in getting uh, a big headed, uh, especially in our program. We, we make sure that we don't play well. They know they play well and we appreciate it. And then we bring them right back down to earth because the uh, training keeps coming up. Let's see what you have today and not what you did yesterday. Right. Well, something's something's working because you've got you guys have, um, like I stated multiple times throughout this interview, you guys are just um, have multiple accolades. You guys are haven't ranked below top 20 in the D2 since you've taken over the program. So you guys are doing really, really great. Um, I want to thank you again, Coach, for taking the time to sit down and chat with me today. I know you um, do have a very busy schedule, so I really appreciate you um, that the time that you've given me. Um, good luck to you and your team for the rest of the season. I know we can expect some pretty good things from them this year. And then Mountain Lions, um, I'll be back next week with sophomore Caitlin Hinkle from women's soccer. Um, so be on the lookout for that video. And until then, enjoy the rest of your week.